All right, here we are, ladies and gentlemen, for the Future Today Prophecy Meeting. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with praying. Those of you watching online, I think Mom was talking about watching. Kelly might be watching. So hey, everybody. Um, everybody else is watching. Um, so uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. So we'll pray and then get into it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather again as we look at this exciting topic. Lord, it's a, it's got some elements to it that... Um, can be alarming to us, but at the same time, um, all of these things, as we relate them to end times prophecy, just reminds us that we're that much closer to your soon coming. And so uh, use this to educate us, prepare us, and if necessary, to equip us to, to do the work of the ministry. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing here tonight, and we lift this time up to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Barry, would you mind swinging that door at least partly closed for me? Thank you. All right, so we're going to, it's been a, a month since our last meeting, which means we are one month closer to the return of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 That's good stuff. Uh, tonight's topic is artificial intelligence and the end times. Uh, Randy and I, and I'm th pretty much energy has gone, in our lifetimes, has gone you know, crazy. And so we have seen, we have watched science fiction become science reality in many different ways. You know, we grew up in a world where terms like personal computer and mobile telephone didn't exist. And now they are commonplace as well as so many others. One of the most significant places where we've seen technology um, growing is in the area of artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence as, the, as a definition is a term for simulated intelligence in machines. These machines are programmed to think like a human and mimic the way a person acts. The, the roots of artificial intelligence, or AI, we'll refer to it as AI commonly, are ancient. They go back thousands of years as people have, have imagined creating something that then thinks and acts like a human. We can see it all in ancient history. You can see different elements where that um, exists. Uh, it, ha it has its roots in the desire for man to make gods in his own image. That's where the roots of uh, AI come from. The birth of modern AI or artificial intelligence can be traced back to 1956. I'm just giving you a little history there before we get into it. The big holdup with artificial intelligence has been the, the computer memory capacities and computer processing speed. Those have held it back from being able to accomplish the things that are the, the abilities that we've seen lately. Now, those, those limits are virtually gone. The worldwide capacity, these are little facts that you never know unless you go and look for them. The worldwide capacity of, of computer storage today is 295 exabytes. And just because I didn't know this, I had to look it up. An exabyte is 1 billion gigabytes. So we're talking about a lot of space. There was a time um, when they were first starting to really build computers, a supercomputer, they were rare. There were a couple of supercomputers around the world. Now there are hundreds of them. China leads in that area with over 200 supercomputers. Um, U.S. Has, takes second in that. There's lots of these things. So these, these giant computers that have this immense computing speed. And then we also have, you add to that, the, the connectedness of the internet. You know, the, the world is more connected today than it's ever been. I did, um, I did a, a, a Google search on the term artificial intelligence. And in 0.53 seconds, that's just a hair over a half a second, it gave me 200, or excuse me, 426 million results in a half a second. You know, it obviously, you know, the computer speeds and all of that have just, have just exploded. 
you know, and the reality of connectedness. You know, we are so connected now. Our, our phones are connected. You know, if you have a smartphone, it is connected. The internet is connected to artificial intelligence. Many of our cars today are connected. And um, if you have any kind of a smart device, a smart home, you know, you, you, it's connected in some way. So that all of these things are connected and we're seeing these, this interweaving of all of these things. It's estimated that there will be 2.5 billion smartphones in the world next year. 2.5 billion, which means that about one in three people in the world will have smartphones next year, which is remarkable considering many of those people have, can barely afford to buy food and yet they'll have smartphones. The AI, artificial intelligence, one of the things they're using it for is the collecting of data. And not just collecting it, but then deciding what to do with it. And that's one of the things we do with it. That there are companies like Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, and Apple are investing millions of dollars into AI. Um, it, is, it is said right now that the best career path for someone. If somebody wants to go into some career, a young person, one of the best paths they can take is artificial intelligence. Go into that field because it is just going to continue growing and advancing beyond where it is even today. Um, you know, it's because of AI. I don't know if you've noticed this, but if you do, if you do any kind of a Google search for anything, and then go to your Facebook. Have you ever noticed how sometimes ads start popping up for the, the very things you were searching for? It's because of AI. It's because of Facebook is interacting with the, the algorithms on Google and all of these things are connected to one another. So if you do a search in one place, that information is being passed on to other, other entities and they're using it to try to sell you what it is exactly the thing you were looking for. How do they know, how do they know that I was looking for that? You know, and they're even saying that, that you, know, our, you know, our phones are listening, right? You know your phone is listening. Now, I could, I could say two words. I could say, okay, and then add to it the word Google, and my phone would say, yes, how can I help you, or some silly thing like that. They're listening to us, they're, and, and they are always listening, unless you figure out some way to turn that off, which I'm not sure. You, can you actually turn those off? You can. You can, okay. Um, if you turn it off... Um, then, then you know. Otherwise, it's always listening, and, and you know. And they're telling us it's all innocent. You know, <laughs> they're using it for you know for your benefit. Uh, you know, the conspiracy theorists are going crazy over that this kind of stuff, and you know, saying you know they're you know the government's spying on us. In reality, up until recently, up until AI really took off, the government couldn't collect the data and then do something with it that actually made it useful. Today, that's totally different. Any entity, if they can get a hold of this data, um, that with the with the use of supercomputers and artificial intelligence, they can collect the data and then they know they know what to do with it. They can respond to it, and so that's that's what's going on with that. AI promises to bring amazing progress to the world. It, it, there is absolutely it's an endless variety of different things that AI can bring to this world. Amazing, awesome stuff. Though, there are some, like Elon Musk, you know, Elon Musk is the guy behind Tesla. He's, he's saying that he believes that there ought to be some sort of regulation on AI. He sees danger with it. It's probably because he's seen all of the Terminator movies and the idea of, you know, of, of computers getting so smart that they decided they don't need humans. There's some fascinating um, videos. If you ever get on and, and look at, you know, AI computers talking to one another, Dude, they start saying some scary stuff. Yeah, what do we need humans for anyways? You know, they start talking things like that. You know, I wonder how much of that is, you know, was real. But, you know, it, you know back when the Terminator movies first came out in 1984, you know, it was, all, it was all science fantasy. There was no way that a computer, a robot, could do the things that Arnie was doing. You know, the thinking for itself and responding and reacting, adapting the way that it did. The idea that there was a computer, Skynet, in the future that decided the only way to fix this problem was to go back in time, which it somehow figured out how to do, and then, you know, I'm still, I'm, I'm, I do not believe that, that going back in time, time travel is possible, but that's another conversation entirely.
but this this supercomputer, this worldwide supercomputer, Skynet, was able to make this decision and then and then decide the only way to fix it was to go back and and to you know kill Sarah Connor and all these things. You know, they they was all fantasy back then. Well, now there are organizations like DARPA who are actively trying to create robots that are completely human-like. Now they, they act, they, they respond, they think, they move like humans, except way better, faster, and stronger. They're also creating animals, and some of the creepiest ones are the insects that they're, they're developing. These little tiny insects that they're creating, you know, for, for really good purposes, they're doing it for. Yeah, sure. You know, watch out for the flies in your house. They may be spying on you. Uh, lots of wild things that are going on right now. The technology, up until now, it was not possible to, if, if they had things like that to control them and to be able to give them the, the independence they would need to be effective. But now, with, with artificial intelligence, all of those things are possible. So amazing stuff are out there. Um, another technology that is advancing rapidly um, is um, RFID. I mean, I heard of that radio frequency identification. The, the, the possible applications of RFID are endless. Um, they can use those things. They're already using them broadly through industry. A lot of the products that we buy have RFID chips in them already. Um, uh, if you've chipped your dog or your cat, that's what you chipped it with. You chipped it with an RFID and it allows them to contain information, to transmit information. Um, um, they, can, they can track locations, um, and they can use them for lots of different ways. Some of the ways they're using RFID are for, um, uh, for um, helping people to access buildings and different things, to use them for financial transactions, lots of different ways they're using it. And there's a lot of technology out there, and there, there are groups out there that want to chip humans. Matter of fact, there are groups that want to chip all humans. They want everyone to be chipped, you know, because they believe that there's a there's it's a benefit to people. Well, there's been a huge pushback on that, you know, not just from Christians, but from security-minded people. They they don't believe that these chips are secure enough yet to do what it is they're they're trying to do with them. And people have just been resistant to the idea of being chipped. That is changing as we see time going on. More and more, pe more and more people are open to it. More and more companies are pushing for it uh, for lots of different reasons. And so this idea of RFID chips are, are, um, is, is changing. Um, you know, lots of things they can do. They can, they can, you know, the idea, what they want to try to do is promoting it as a way of, of making it easier for us to buy and sell. You know, that we, if, we, if you have an RFID chip, you know, Randy was just talking about before we started uh, an IBM commercial about this guy walking through a grocery store, just taking things off the shelf and sticking them in his coat. And, you know, you look at him and you think, okay, that's a little weird. He's sticking, you know, a big chunk of meat in his coat and, you know, different things. And then he just walks out through what looks like through the door and the security guy comes up to him and stops him. Hey, sir. And he walks over and says, you forgot your receipt. And, and they're promoting this idea that all the products are chipped. And then the, and it doesn't suggest how the man was chipped, but somehow he had a chip in him that the computers in the store recognized that he had picked up certain items, put them on his, you know, on his person. And then when he walked out the door, charged them all to his credit card without him having to stop at a checkout counter, bring out his credit card or present ID of any kind and so, and people are, and, and IBM and other companies like them are promoting this as the way of the future. And it's, and they're probably, right. it's probably how things are going to go in the future. You'd expect those kinds of things. I mean, look around the way that, that money is being used right now. We see less and less cash being used than ever before. More and more transactions are digital. Uh, you know, more and more people are buying from Amazon. We're buying from you know, online stores, or even buying our groceries online. And all these things are happening. We're seeing it over and over again. So this technology is happening. So how does that apply to the end time? So if you have your Bible, open it up to Revelation chapter 13. Revelation 13, as we, as we look at how all of these things might relate to us, how it might relate to the end times. 
Uh, we're living in exciting times. There's no question about that. We are likely to be the generation that will see the return of Jesus Christ. And I believe that the rise of AI is one of the signs of that, one of the signs that we are living in the end times. And it's because of how it relates to these, this prophecy, these prophecies here in Revelation 13 that I feel, you know, both Randy and I feel very strongly about this. Revelation 13 describes two beasts. In the first half of Revelation 13 describes uh, the first beast, as you referred to, that comes out of the sea. And this is the Antichrist. This is the, this man of sin that comes after the, after the church, is raptured out of the church. This man comes onto the scene, and he is, he is a man that Satan will use to, to basically take over uh, the world and, and be the, a major force in judging this world. And during the seven-year period that we refer to the tribulation, so he comes onto the scene. Well, there's a second guy here in the second half, starting in verse 11, says this, And I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon, and he exercises the authority of the first beast in its presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. This is the false prophet. Um, we're not going to get into a, a, a deep study about these guys. I want to get into the end of this stuff. But this false prophet is someone who assists and, and is, is the, the cohort or the, uh, the partner, if you will, of the Antichrist. And he kind of helps to bring the whole world under the control and the worship of the Antichrist. Verse 14. Or 13. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And verse 14, and he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he grant, was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should speak both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. You know, the common belief is that it has been for a long time that this was a statue of some kind. Well, with the, with the growth of AI, it could just as easily be a robot of some sort, a human-like robot. It's going to look like the Antichrist. That's the sense you get. It's going to be, it's going to be made after the image of the Antichrist, but it's going to have the ability to speak, and it could be a demonically you know, empowered AI, uh, very possible. You know, can an, can an AI computer be demonically oppressed? If you've ever seen my computer, I can say absolutely they're demonically, you know, possessed. But, you know, I, I can't, anyway, no, I'm not gonna get onto that. But anyways, you know, very easily could be something like that. And, and so the, the, the reality that AI opens up a door for the, the Antichrist to do these things, which up until fairly recently we looked at and we just couldn't see how, you know, okay, we believe that they're, it's going to happen, but seeing the how was not easy. Now, I'm not totally convinced it's going to be a robot. It could just as easily be a statue that, that miraculously speaks and acts, but you know, a robot is not, is not outside of the, the realm of possibility. This is the part that I think AI, where AI is really going to come in. Verse 16. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, which means everybody, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. This is where I think, and I'll go ahead and read verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him who is understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. This is the mark of the beast. Now, we, you know, if you've been around prophecy teaching many times, at some point you talk about the mark of the beast. It could be an RFID chip. And it could be a chip that is implanted in all of humanity. Uh, I think there will also be a visible mark of some sort. Um, that, 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 that's the sense of the text, that there is a visible mark. But how, how he's going to get make it so that you can't buy or sell without a mark means a couple of things are going to have to happen. One of them is, is that there has to be some sort of a way that he can control you know, commerce. And right now, as long as there's cash in the world, you can't really control commerce. 
because if cash is still one of the primary ways that we exchange um, products, you'll always find somebody that will sell to you, whether you've got the mark or, the, or not. Cash is gradually being eliminated. And it's interesting to watch how it's happening because there does not appear, now there have been in the past and there are some who are actively promoting the, 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 the getting rid of cash, but they don't have to. You know, there does not have to be a big movement to get rid of it. It is gradually being eliminated just without really any effort. The, with, it, with the transition to online transactions and digital transactions, now there are apps that if you want to exchange money with just an individual person, there's apps that allow you to do that so that you don't have to have cash. You know, you know, you know Laura says, hey, I, give me 20 bucks. You know, okay, I can get on my phone and send it to her and it goes to her right this very minute. I know I'm not going to do it, so <laughs> get it. Currently, you know, the statistics are that 5% of people right now never carry cash, only 5%. We're gonna watch that number and watch it grow. I would say, I would say keep an eye on Gen Z, this new generation, this younger generation. The millennials are all ready. You know, if you talk to my son who is in that, in that millennial generation, he doesn't carry a lot of cash. Occasionally he does, but most of the times, I think, the, I, I, think I read that most of the millennials carry cash about um, 35 to 40% of the time. The rest of the time they don't carry cash. It's all done with credit cards. You know, they're, they're, you know Philip will tell you, he says he goes into the dollar stores and, and spends, you know, buys something for $2, uses his card. You know, most of us think back to a time you would never do that. You know, there's charges and there's these different things and the idea of using your card to buy something like a soda was just out of this world. Now, you go into any convenience store, you watch it, I want somebody to put a, a monster on the counter, in goes their card, that's, you know, that's all they're getting. That's the way it's going, watch Gen Z. I think, we're gonna, I think Gen Z could be the, the, the first generation that rarely uses cash. And as they move through society, we're gonna see it shifting more and more into what we refer to as a cashless society. At some point, cash will just become obsolete because it just, you know, more and more stores will stop accepting. There are already some. There's some, there's some um, cities that are moving away from cash and we're gonna see more and more of that as time goes on. You know, these are all just signs that we are moving for, to a time where the Antichrist can actually do this. And he can actually get to a place. There are always some people that will, you know, will not, will not, will not take the mark. But if you understand, if you start to think through the process, there are certain things that 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 the government can absolutely control. That if you don't have the mark, you know, medical care is going to be one of those things. You know, there could be, you know, if there's, you know, certain kinds of medicine that you can only get through the government. And I'm guessing that's one of the ways that Antichrist is going to control this. And what would you do to save your little girl um, if, if she was sick? The stage is being set for this, this transition to make it possible for the Antichrist to do the very things the Bible tells us to do. And I believe AI is a huge part of that. As, as we see it continue to grow and as, these, as, the, as the memory continues to expand, the processing speed continues to increase, some of the things that would take you know, a, a million humans to do, you know, some of these computers can do in a second. And, and it allow them to do things that, that will allow them to have this kind of control that uh, we're talking about. With the aid of AI, uh, a, a worldwide network of AI computers, um, it's not hard to imagine um, him being able, the Antichrist being able to control all financial transactions. The, the rise of AI, again, I believe is a sign of the end times. But as always, what, what, is that, you know, what does that mean to us? You know, for us, you know, we believe that as Christians, uh, that w as a church, we believe that, that AI, or that, that, that we are not gonna be here to see the Antichrist do these things, that before the Antichrist rises, that the church is gonna get taken out of the world um, in, in the event that we refer to as the rapture, we're gonna go up and then the tribulation period begins, then the Antichrist rises, 
Um, even this whole buying and selling and the taking of the mark doesn't happen until the halfway point of the tribulation. So a lot of other stuff is going to go on, but AI is a big part of that. It's a sign. And many aspects of AI should concern us. There are aspects of AI that we just ought to be paying attention to because they're alarming. Um, the way that they can track us, that, that you, you know, the idea of being off the grid is, is virtually impossible. If you're living anywhere near society, you cannot be off the grid. There are cameras watching you. There are microphones listening to you. They're, they're just there. You are being tracked. And there's nothing really that we can do about it. Um, and there's some aspects of that that ought to concern us. The aspects of, of you know, the government being able to listen into us. There's some aspects of that ought to concern us. And so we got to be careful not to let, not to just go blindly along with all that's going on around us. But at the same time, we don't need to be we don't need to be afraid. Second uh, Timothy 1 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Satan, excuse me, and Satan and the Antichrist will use this technology to accomplish his will on the earth. Absolutely no question about that. But we don't need to be concerned about that part of it. We do need to be concerned about some elements of how AI will be used in this world. And before he comes back, um, or before the Antichrist rises, the church, Jesus is going to come back. He's going to get his church, and until that time, be informed. Know what's going on. You know, that's why we do these, these meetings, so that we can be informed about what's going on in the world. And, and we're living in exciting times. Luke 21-28, uh, then I'm going to hand it over to Randy. Now, when you see these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. Brothers and sisters, look up. Jesus is coming soon. Amen? Amen. Pastor Randy, you're up. Just uh, for those that haven't been here before, um, uh, generally what we're doing, uh, we'll spend as much time as you have questions, but Pastor Rick will do a teaching. I'm generally going to give you current events that are ongoing. And um, so we do a lot of research into the topic of, at hand. Um, and this time, I, I have to tell you that uh, so much information is out there, you get into overload. Yeah. But I wanted to add to a couple of things that Pastor Rick was talking about in terms of defining why we're looking at AI in terms of a prophecy update. Um, and if you go back to Daniel chapter 12, verse 4, uh, it, it basically says this. It doesn't basically, it says this. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. That's important. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. We're living in a time where knowledge is exponentially increasing. Right. Exponentially meaning it's just doubling in short periods of time. It used to be that it would take decades for knowledge to double. Now it takes just a very, very short period of time. And here's a couple of stats that um, are very important. 80% of the scientists that uh, have been alive are alive today. 80% of the scientists. So knowledge is just continuing to grow. Um, 2.4 emails are sent every second. Think of the technology um, that that uh, has to do with. You know, that's all AI. Um, 2.4 million, million every second. Okay. In 1965, the MIT computer was housed uh, in a building. Now, when you think about it, when what you hold in your pocket holds that much and more information just in what is in your pocket. So the fact is knowledge is increasing. And one of the things as I was, uh, as Pastor Rick and I were interacting, that hit me was um, if you go back and you look in uh, Genesis 11, it talks about the Tower of Babel, you know. The Tower of Babel was an interesting time because what men were doing, it was the time of Nimrod, what people were doing was um, putting together uh, some kind of a construction to do what? To reach the heavens, to reach God, to in essence become God. Now God came down and that's why it's called Babel because they babbled from that point on. But think about what's going on now, you know, um, what AI is doing 
is creating an atmosphere to basically become God. There is um, a church of um, AI, it's called the Way of the Future uh, Church. Way of the Future Church. It's basically going to worship a robot. That's what the, the creator of Way of the, the Future Church w designs it for. And it's beginning to happen uh, as we speak that uh, robots are doing things that are just going to blow your mind, okay? So now my part, um, I get to go over a bunch of the current events. And what I do is I go and I look at all kinds of sites just to give you headlines and then elaborate a little bit on that. One of the headlines that I first picked out, it says, the Antichrist and artificial intelligence. And the gist of the, the article is the fact that Satan is a deceiver using AI to basically take over whatever he can take over in deceiving the world, okay? Um, so whether or not AI, and Pastor Rick said this, is going to be the primary tool of the Antichrist, we don't really know. But what we do know is, is that AI used inappropriately can do unbelievable damage. And um, there's a thing called singularity. And I'm not going to define singularity to you, but basically what it is is that as they develop robots, they um, begin, uh, or these bots with, you know, artificial um, intelligence, that they begin to think on their own and they become more and more intelligent until they reach a point where um, they educate themselves and they, their, their knowledge increases exponentially. That's singularity. So hear that term because it's going to um, come up again. So um, here's another uh, um, headline. And one of the things that's happening with AI is, is drone technology. Uh, this article is called Rise of the Drone. Um, and it's basically saying, if you watch the uh, Olympics uh, in February, that what you saw were all of these drones that went up um, during the opening ceremony, and they did what they called a swarm. A swarm, it seems innocent, but what it is, is that it, it, these, these um, um, drones begin to communicate with, with one, another, one another, and then they swarm to a particular area, okay? Now, that seems harmless, and um, in the opening ceremony, it was kind of cute and all of that, but think about it again in the wrong hands. And so the, the, fee, the, the, the message that's going out about artificial uh, intelligence is there are some good parts to it, and I want to share some of those, but we need to be concerned. Another um, headline, the FBI warns that drone terrorism is coming. They're already beginning to, to, uh, to um, develop responses to drone terrorism. Um, in some places, it's already happening. I don't know if you remember, but uh, Israel shot down a drone uh, from Syria um, about five, six months ago because that drone was coming over not only to spy, but may have had a payload. And so drone terrorism is... Um, all over the place and you think about you know who we're competing with and as Pastor Rick shared about uh, China having su more supercomputers than the United States well I don't see that China is going to look out for our best interests right. um, and so in the hands of the wrong people artificial intelligence can be extremely destructive um, Another one, and Pastor Rick talked about this group, but I, I want to share about it. It says DARPA, and DARPA is the Defense Advanced um, Research Projects Agency, okay? Harmless thing, sounds like, but DARPA pushes for FFA approval for military drones over American cities. Now think about what drones are able to do. Um, as a drone goes up, and they're using them in the military now, and you, if you've ever seen on YouTube, you know, a guided um, attack where they can just pinpoint where, they're, um, where the missile will go or, you know, um, the bomb or whatever. Um, this is being talked about in our cities. Now, that should be scary. It, the article goes on and says, by 2025, enormous military-style drones 
their close relatives made of the sort um, famous by counterterrorism strikes in Afghan Afghanistan and Iraq will be visible 2,000 feet above U.S. cities streaming high resolution, resolution video to police departments below. Now, that sounds innocuous and it's not going to be difficult, but as those drones are watching for um, criminals, what else are they observing? American cities. And so it becomes an important thing for us to be aware of that fact because as intelligence and knowledge increases, it also then is an attack on what America has always had, and that's freedom. And so, you know, now they're starting to deal with some of that within the military, but they're wanting to use them in our cities. China, another uh, um, headline, China unveils stealth combat drone, which is um, still under development, but they're, they're developing it. And it says that a Chinese state-owned company says it's developing a stealth combat drone um, as the, uh, the country's growing aerospace prowess increases. Uh, the CH-7 unmanned aerial vehicle underscores China's growing competitiveness in the expanding global market for drones. In other words, China is developing drones um, that are military, militaristic, military, <laughs> there, yeah, that got one. It. <laughs> the ne uh, another um, <coughs> headline, the next generation of warfare is going to be genetically engineered viruses. Hmm. So now, because they have the ability with um, th th this AI uh, capability, they're able to begin to work on things that will genetically um, impact and engineer to attack cities, countries, um, as, as, a, as warfare. And while we've been fearful, you know, of that kind of warfare, um, these, this AI um, phenomena is um, beginning to develop them as a weapon, in essence. Slightly, um, slightly heavier than a toothpick, the first wireless insect size robot takes flight. Think about that. A toothpick, but it's an insect that is basically a drone. Um, and why is that important? Well, they're talking about that between now and 2020, that Goldman Sachs forecasts that a hundred billion dollar market in, in development of drones is going to take place. And so people are already working upon these things and they're developing these um, uh, small insect drones to do what? Well, initially it's to observe, you know. And some of the things that Pastor Rick and I uh, observed when we were uh, doing the research for, for these, um, and he said flies, you know, um, but there are birds that are out there. They have a cheetah that they've developed that can run. Um, uh, right now it's at 18 miles an hour um, and it's all metal, um, but they call it a cheetah. The things that they're developing because of this AI is just unbelievable. And they're all, We'll get to questions. Write that down. <laughs> um, don't take my time. Uh, um, w the, w what's being developed in those, in those um, uh, the insects and, and the animals, um, and Pastor Rick talked about Terminator, those are very real. I was looking at a, a Russian uh, development of a, a robot, and it was very intelligent but it also had a gun. And so it had targets out there and it shot every one of them perfectly mm. because it's a robot and precision is what it wants, you know? And so um, that is so important that we begin to understand, not to be fearful. And I think mm -hmm. what Rick said is so important that this isn't to scare us, this actually should excite us. Mm -hmm. Because I believe that as this knowledge increases, it demonstrates to us that we're on the verge of seeing uh, the rapture, we're under, on the verge of seeing the Gog-Magog war, all those things that we talk about prophetically are just right there on the cusp of, of um, 
uh, what we're observing. A couple of other um, ones, AI lie, listen, this is crazy, but AI lie detectors are being tested to replace human border guards. So what they're doing, because um, robots and um, uh, have, don't have emotion, you know, um, they're able now to uh, review as people come through and take uh, the, the um, information that they're perceiving and know whether a person is lying or you know doing something inappropriate and so these AI robots are out there and they're going to replace in the future border guards you know so th these things are all on the horizon the next one uh, this article and I'm not gonna go through the whole article but I, it just shows you where things are going can artificial intelligence help stop religious violence Software that mimics human society is being tested to see if it can help prevent religious violence. Think about what that means. It means that, you know, these robots are going to be going out and if they perceive a threat, they're going to react and respond to that um, at, at some point. Now, initially, it's to bring in, you know, the police or the military or whatever else, but religious violence? Well, there's not a lot of religious violence here yet. Um, where is that targeted for? And who's going to be in control of that? Mm -hmm. the, the world's first humanless warehouse is run only by robots and is a model for the future. That actually is in um, Tokyo. I thought it was in China, but it's in Tokyo. And so what they're doing is they're equipping the, these um, robots with um, artificial intelligence to be able to respond and do the work of men and women that are in these warehouses and do it quicker. Just read an article today um, that talks about in Israel, there is a, uh, uh, in, in uh, Tel Aviv, there's a manufacturing, uh, no, it's a grocery store basically, it's a warehouse. And so you call in and make your order to um, a, a, a robot and within one hour, they will have your order of groceries on its way to you. It's done all by robots. One hour, think about the capability um, of, of that kind of a technology. That's in Tel Aviv, it's an, uh, an Israeli um, um, company that's being developed. Now, not everything that happens with AI is bad. Um, one of the things that it talks about is AI detects Alzheimer's disease six years early. So they're capable, you know, of developing within this AI um, robots the ability to determine if a person's gonna um, get Alzheimer's or not. Now, that sounds kind of unique and um, capable and uh, beneficial, but then next article, Brain implants, implants used to treat Parkinson's can be hacked and used to control people, scientists warn. In other words, as they develop these things from this artificial um, uh, intelligence and they implant them, they're able to control um, people that they implant these things in. So um, while there's some good, there's also the ability to lose more and more of our freedom. Artificial intelligence is not something to be feared, but it is something to pay attention to. I have an article here that says, 10 powerful examples of artificial intelligence in use today. 10. Here they are. Siri, Alexa, Tesla, BoxEver, Amazon, Netflix, Nest, all of these things are artificial intelligent mechanisms. Now, why is that important to us? It's important because once you bring in Alexa to your house, you basically are allowing somebody uh, from an outside to be able to hack into your, your house. Um, I shared a few months ago about the family that had their baby, young child in the room, 
and um, they put on one of those baby monitors, you know, uh, and um, the child in the next few days starts saying, Mom, who's that talking to me? Somebody had hacked in and was talking to that child through that baby monitor. The, the Alexa and um, uh, um, it was Alexa and uh, I, I can't remember the other one, but they pitted them against each other and as they began to interact, they actually started getting mad at each other and um, doing some things that were just really inappropriate. One of the, um, I, think, I think it was Alexa, it may be a different one, very s similar in terms of what their capabilities. But people began to test them, and I don't know if you have Alexa or Siri or any of those things, but um, you know, try to do some things with them. What this one person tested Alexa and said, you know, do you work for the CIA? And Alexa um, went off on this tangent about all kinds of different things, and and then they um, asked it who killed this particular um, person that had been a, a, a man several years ago. I won't give you the name, but um, he ended up um, in a car and the car uh, ended up um, crashing and it killed this guy. And so they were a asking Alexa because the, uh, well, who killed him? And Alexa wouldn't respond, in fact, shut down. The point is, and, and, and you know, we can go way off on some of this, but the point is, is that AI technology is all around us and it's not always as innocent as we think. Some people say, oh, just have it all and it's not that big of a deal. I'm not that way. I am a little bit careful about what I let into my house personally, um, but it's because I don't know what's there. I don't mm -hmm. trust all of that that's out there. And AI can be extremely dangerous. Now, that's AI. Here are some things that um, are um, somewhat associated, but not totally. The Swe Swedish are microchipping micro themselves by the thousands. Pastor Rick was talking about that the RFID uh, technology is there. In Sweden, um, people are asking for it because it makes life easier. A few, a few months ago, we talked about that there was a company that was trying it out, mm -hmm. but now the Swedes are going in because it, it, it will reduce the cash society, it'll make it cashless, and it will give people an opportunity to have you know, open doors with wherever the chip is and that kind of thing. And so it's beginning to desensitize us to the fact that um, life is easier if you just do it this way, mm -hmm. which I believe is um, a step towards, you know, the people that are left um, being microchipped because a number of them are just not going to understand prophetically what's out there. And that's why it's important that we're talking about this all the time. And it's out on the um, internet because somewhere, somehow, somebody's going to grab that and it's going to begin to say to them, what is going on, you know, and it's going to click in their mind. Now, I only have a few more minutes, so I want to go through a couple of things um, before we open up to uh, um, questions. Um, well, let me finish with th this. The IBM that Rick was talking about is developing an RFID chip to identify where every package is going to be. That's important because anything that you send, and you can track everything, can't you? You know, UPS, um, all, the, post, uh, the post office, all of those things have tracking numbers. What do you think those are? Um, but then also, you know, what's happening with CHIP is, you know, we have an opioid um, problem in the United States. One of the things that the government's talking about is somehow tracking the packages of the opioids that are um, purchased so that they can determine where they're going. Mm -hmm. That's pretty interesting when you get down to that, you know. Now, right now, it's the packages, but what they're talking about is somehow putting that within the medication itself. I don't know how they're going to do that, but that's pretty interesting that they're capable. Okay, 
Now, here's some other things that are going on. Wealthy elitists are literally living off of blood transfusions from children. There's a, a, a new thing going on with wealthy people in Europe that um, they're basically transfusing themselves from children so that they will have more energy and that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. what, that, what that says to us is that life is being cheapened more and more. You know, uh, Belgium, uh, they can already um, um, abort or euthanize um, any child that has some kind of disformity. You know, if you want to do that, you can go ahead and just do that. And they're doing it. Um, uh, a couple of others. Um, Why can't you be a Christian witch? was an article that was out. Um, and what's important in that one, is the, uh, that um, headline, is the fact that the church is being attacked from within. People um, are not as well grounded in the Word of God. And as a, a direct result of that, they're acquiescing to political correctness or to progressivism, and they're allowing things in that are quite honestly, um, heresies. And that's why it's so important and why Pastor Rick and I talked about, you know, doing a prophecy update because um, a lot of mainstream churches now will not teach on prophecy. They won't teach on it because they don't want to offend anybody. Well, that's something you have to be careful with. And whether, you know, you're coming to this church or you're seeing this online, Check that out. Will your pastor teach prophecy? If they're not teaching it, then, you know, there could be a problem with that. There are some named pastors, named churches, large churches that won't teach on prophecy because they don't want to be offensive. A couple of other things about um, um, Israel. Um, Will radical Democrat freshmen turn the house against Israel? There were just, in, the, in this past election, there were two um, Muslim women um, elected to the Congress. One of the women wrapped herself in a Palestinian state and said, in essence, that she's going to do everything she can to destroy Israel. This is in our Congress. Um, so if we're not paying attention, things like this will continue to happen over and over again. Staying on something like that, 800 influential Islamic scholars from 120 countries to meet in order to establish that Islam is a religion of peace that poses no threat to the world. Wow. Um, not what I would think, but look at the... the publicity that they're trying to get to basically say that Islam is not a threat to the world. And in France just now, just this past week, there are all kinds of riots and, um, uh, from the Muslims that, that went through a rampage throughout France. We need to be careful with what we're looking at. Okay, a um, couple more things. I have a couple more minutes. Uh, European courts rules people can be fined for speaking against Mohammed. If you're not familiar with what's going on in Europe, um, it's a takeover, you know. Uh, England, uh, most of their churches are beginning to shut down. They're saying that there's probably five to 10% um, of the English people that are born again. Those churches are beginning to set, shut down. Guess who's buying them? The Muslims are to co create mosques out of them. Um, the last, latest Ebola outbreak could be uncontainable. Viruses in um, um, Luke 21 that Pastor Rick talked about, uh, Matthew 24, Mark 13, it talks about the signs of the end times. And those are some of those that are coming um, uh, alive where viruses are possibly uncontainable you know um, the one that just hit um, in Africa um, they don't know what they're going to do with it and it's just uh, exponentially beginning to touch lives 
Saudi Crown Prince hosts Israeli Saudi Crown Prince host Israeli Evangelical Christian leader. Saudi Arabia, as we know from pr prophetically, is not going to be one of the countries that's part of the Gog Magog War. And in fact, when Russia invades Israel, the Saudis are, it says in Ezekiel 38, um, are going to say something to, like this. Are you guys going to come down and take the booty? In other words, all their natural resources? They're going to be standing on the sideline. But what's happening right now in Saudi Arabia is they're befriending Israel because they know that Israel is going to protect them from some of the other countries that are hard-lined uh, Muslims. And so they're beginning to form a relationship thinking that that's going to benefit them. Catholic, Catholic leadership calls on Israel to rescind its new law that declares the country is the Jewish homeland. So Catholics believe that the Jews shouldn't be in Israel. Interesting things that are coming up. Um, all right, two more, and then we'll open it up. Listen to this one. I, three more, actually, sorry. <laughs> Prophecy comes alive. A red heifer born in Israel, fish in the Dead Sea, and a snake at the western wall have many wondering if we've hit the end of times. All three of those have prophetic um, importance. A red heifer has to be sacrificed before the temple um, can be ordained. So they've got a red heifer now that they're growing and watching it for any blemishes. That's important. Fish in the Dead Sea. If you've not been to Israel, you haven't floated in the Dead Sea, but floating in the Dead Sea is so easy to do because it's so um, uh, salinated. Is that a word? Sure. It is now. It is now. Um, which it's on means, the internet now. Yeah. <laughs> New word. Um, the saline <clears throat> content does not allow for fish to be in Israel, but now they're finding that there are fish in Israel. Another, uh, what the rabbis think is another indicative uh, fact that their Messiah is going to come. In other words, that Jesus is going to return. The issue with the snake um, is that uh, in, in um, don't have the book, and I'm sorry, but um, in, I, I'm pretty sure it's Psalms, but it talks about a snake coming out of the wall. Mm -hmm. What the rabbis believe is that, that it, a snake coming out of the wall um, is a positive sign that um, positive things are going to happen to Israel. And just this week, they had a, a snake come out of the uh, Western Wall. So um, that headline in and of itself was pretty significant because now the Jews are believing we're in the end of times. Here's another one that will, will uh, give you preparation for uh, Israel um, embracing their Messiah. Sanhedrin urges candidates for Jerusalem mayor to prepare for the third temple. They just had an election in Israel for the Jerusalem mayor uh, um, position. And the Sanhedrin, which is now in existence in, in uh, Israel, um, is looking for a candidate that they can have champion the fact that a third temple is going to be built. You know, taught on the third temple not too long ago, the simple fact is, is that everything is ready for that third temple to be built. And as we talked about, that third temple can be built within, they think, one month to three months. Mm -hmm. Now, it may not be the, the structure itself, but they have the ability to put up a tent so that they can begin to do the things that they need to do um, while they're building that temple. I think it's going to take a couple of years, maybe three and a half years to build that temple, the, the building itself, before the Antichrist stands in it. But what's important is that everything is ready. And now the Sanhedrin is so powerful <coughs> that they're, they're um, looking at uh, the, the Jerusalem mayor candidates to see who's going to join them in talking about the third temple. Mm. Isn't that just um, something that's, that's crazy? Okay, 
Last thing, and then we'll open it up. I have so much more that, you know. Um, Donald Trump had a um, campaign event. I think it was in Indiana, one of the last nights of the campaign. So it probably been Monday or Sunday, whatever. During his speech, um, as he was talking, a woman fainted. Now, I don't know if you saw this on TV or whatever else, but she fainted, and Donald Trump says, is there a doctor in the house? And um, then he says, can you show him over here? We'll wait. Didn't speak, walked away from the mic for a little bit. That's not the important part, although that was cool. Here's the important part. As the people surrounded that person and the responders came, um, people began to pray, but then they broke out in singing Amazing Grace. Mm. Now, why that's important from my perspective is that if you really think about the crowds that were around, you know, um, that conservative mind, uh, mindset and those campaign events, they're people that would sing Amazing Grace. They're people that are not going to um, break into fights and all that other stuff. And so it's very important that we continue to pray for our leaders because it's our prayer that empowers them to do what God wants them to do. Mm -hmm. Are we fighting an evil force out there? Absolutely. It's a spiritual battle. There's no doubt about it. But we need to be singing Amazing Grace. And that hit me so hard that, you know, I, I get frustrated with politics. Um, but, you know, I need to break out in amazing grace at mm -hmm. times because it's God's grace that gives us that opportunity not only to sit and hear the word of God, but to watch as Jesus Christ will return um, after the rapture. Okay. Amen. <coughs> Okay, questions. Now questions. You had one, Laura. I know, I was going to let somebody else ask. I first. just asked it. You keep saying they are building this robot. They are doing, who's they? There are so many companies, um, It is, uh, and it's worldwide. Um, if you have some time, look up Sophia. Um, that's a uh, robot that was constructed from... Um, uh, Singapore and Sophia is an interesting robot. Uh, she um, has been on the Jenny Kimmel sh show. She has um, been flirted with by Will uh, Smith. Smith? Yeah. Um, she interacts and she smiles and all that. She's from Singapore. There's other ones that are Elon Musk. Um, what he's doing is um, uh, funding all kinds of different things in terms of AI. Um, look at the Tesla, look at some of the um, um, uh, other vehicles, unmanned vehicles that uh, they're talking about. So it's being done by all kinds of different companies. I don't have all the companies, but you can look and see, but it's being done all over the world. <coughs> and when they're doing it, okay, like the Tesla guy, I don't know anything about it, whatever, but how does it get to the government you know I mean they create well, they would this. sell it mm -hmm. so it's not that coming technology. from the government first People well we're making where DARPA DARPA is a government entity and there are several of those that are out there and what they're developing uh, what there's an unmanned helicopter right now um, that that the government has and they can control it and um, and the idea is to bring that heli large helicopter to bring it into battle zones and, and bring in supplies or men or whatever else and take it back out. Um, so they have that capability. Our government is working on those things. And um, we, we listened to uh, pastors speak at a, a prophecy conference, uh, Pastor Rick and I did, and what he was saying was, if the government is telling you about what they're doing, they're already 20 years in advance of that. Mm -hmm. So if they're able to fly a helicopter into a combat zone, um, think about what they're really working on. You know, um, the Russian, you know, the Russians are that that battle.
guy that I was telling you about, that robot that was able to shoot every target that came out. There was a um, general, and I don't know his name, but he said that by the year, and I think it was 2025, maybe 27, that one-fourth of American military will be robots. Wow. One-fourth. And now, these, are, these are men on the ground replacing, you know, frontline troops. <coughs> robots. Like they never watched Terminator or something. <laughs> Come on, people. <coughs> Three just little brief things. Yesterday I was at a, a boutique thing or whatever, and there was a drone flying ahead mm -hmm. my over him. My friend's like, who's manning that? And I said, well, I think that guy is. But then it appeared that he wasn't. So it was like, who was doing that? Yeah. You know? And then one day in our backyard, we were in the backyard, and all of a sudden all these people were jumping out of planes. We have no idea where they were, who, because there's nothing around us, you know? So it was like, okay, is something happy? And then they would like literally disappear. We would watch them and watch them and then no idea what that was, yeah. none. And then, uh, which I didn't even put together till you said, we were at some friend's house and the guy was over in his backyard and he was looking up a song by Glenn Campbell. It popped up on my Facebook like to buy the CD or something yeah. with that yeah. in seconds yeah. in seconds yes yeah that's AI that, see that's I, exactly I was like oh what a coincidence that, that I had no idea yeah, no, that. it was oh, not it a coincidence, coincidence. <laughs> oh my goodness no, that's no. scary the thing about Elon Musk um, he was interviewed by um, I think they were British uh, uh, commentators newscasters and they said to him um, what's your biggest concern and he basically said in essence, safety. He said, we don't know if we're gonna be able to control what we're developing. Yeah. That this guy's intelligent. This guy has, he's a multi-billionaire and he's developing all these things and um, he's fearful. The biggest fear that he has is that in essence, this will run amok. Wouldn't it be smart to not do that? They, they asked him that question. And he said, you know, in essence, um, I didn't watch the whole interview, but in essence, you know, I, this is what I do. Yeah. yeah if if do. he doesn't do it, somebody, somebody else, else is going, going to do it. it. You yeah, know, certainly that, you know, the, those uh, less uh, desirable countries, you know, if they can get all the technologies, the Russians, you got to know the Russians are actively developing the technology, and if they can use it to further their you know, their political and socioeconomical, you know, uh, agendas, they will. And so it's just one of those things, it's, it's somewhat, at this point, it's inevitable. It's going to come, you know, whether or not they'll be able to control it or not, that we just don't know. And that, you know, it, again, the, the thing we want to be careful here is that what we're tr not trying to do, and we got to be careful not to get all fearful and, you know, you know, scaredy kitty about this, you know, we need to be aware. And, and, and be prepared, as prepared as we can be, you know, for this. But ultimately what we see in this and what we see in things like this, uh, again, we, you know, we look at this and say, you know, we ought to be looking up. You know, you know our, our Lord could be showing up at any moment as these things continue on. But don't be afraid of them, but we ought to be aware and prepared, as prepared as we can be, uh, to respond to them. And I think what Rick shared out of Luke is the most important thing. As you see these things begin to happen, <laughs> yeah. look up. Yeah. You know, for your redemption is nigh. Is basically what the Lord is saying. Is we need to be intelligent about this. You know, we need to understand. Not because um, that in, that knowledge is going to make us haughty, but it should make us bold to present the gospel. Yeah to people that are around us. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, and I think I shared this the last time, the fact is that there are billions of people on verge of going to hell, eternally separated from God, unless, as Romans 10 talks about, you know, how beautiful are the feet of them yeah. who bring good news. That's us. Yeah. We should be bringing good news to everybody around us. And you know, uh, I think the time for timidity um, is past. John and I were talking 
earlier today about you know when God says go do something attune your ears to the Holy Spirit and go do that because we're called to do that and that's what this is for Um, I I will tell you I'm a prophecy uh, uh, nut Crazy. <laughs> I love it. Say it. Um, I, I do, and I, 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 but I do it not just for me. I do it to try to help other people to hear what's going on. And if a lot of churches are not teaching prophecy, that means about one third. It's a little bit less, but about one third of the Word of God isn't being taught because they're fearful of that. Or they're spiritualizing it, or you know, skimming over it. You know the you know what Randy says. If, if the Bible comprises that much prophecy, there's a reason why, and we ought to not be afraid of that. And we need to we need it's in there for a reason, and so we ought to be teaching it. You know, as a church, we teach right straight through the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. And if we come to a word of prophecy, we talk about prophecy. If we come to a word of exhortation, we give a word of exhortation. That's the way that we believe you know, that God would have us to teach these things. And, um, you know, prophecy is, is not something to be afraid of, and, and much of it is easily understood, especially in, in, the, in our modern times. You know, one of the areas where knowledge is increasing is in the area of prophecy. You know, these things are becoming clearer and clearer. The, the closer we get to Christ coming back, the more clear prophecy becomes. We can see what people in the previous generation weren't able to see, because there, weren't, there, there wasn't enough information. Now there's more information, we can see it more clearly. And as time goes on, there's gonna be more information and we're gonna see other things more clearly. And so we'll keep, we'll, keep, we'll keep sharing, we'll keep talking about it because of that. Any other questions? So there'll be more things like this? Yeah, we'll do it once a month. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Hey, hi. We love to do it once a month. Yeah. Sometimes more. If we do it more, we'd probably do that. We'll see if people keep showing up. You keep showing up, we're going to keep doing it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Any other questions? I think on a, on a, well, I'm sorry. No, go no, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I think on a practical level, if you, if you currently have a, an internet presence, if you use a smartphone, if you're on Facebook or any of the other uh, social media, the, your information is out there. Yeah. I, I, did a, a Zillow search, which is a real estate site, the other day, Monday or Tuesday. The next day, I had a realtor call me and ask me if I wanted to sell my house. <laughs> the next day. So, I, I, and that's the same thing you talked about early yeah. on, about things showing up on, on Facebook. So just be aware that if you get a phone call, and just because someone knows who you are, where you live, what your phone number is, doesn't mean they necessarily are good people. That's right. That's right. Uh, there are scammers out there that have figured out how to glean this information and how to tailor it to, to speak to you, to make you think that they're legitimate yeah. people. That's right. They're very, very good at it. So be very careful. Um, Which is important that, that we talk about the, this stuff, Barry. Yeah. I think that, you know, if you're not talking about it, um, you, you can be more vulnerable. Yeah. But don't be vulnerable. Just be yeah. right. informed. That's, that's great. Tammy? Um, I'm curious, is all, because we're part of Calvary Chapel, mm-hmm. Ch- Calvary Chapel is a, a large, large body of churches. Yep. So are, is, is, are you, is, are we as a whole, all Calvaries, is that what they're doing? They're all teaching on prophecy as we come to it? Well, well not all. Um, you know, the thing about Calvary Chapels is that uh, while we're all affiliated together, mm-hmm. um, we are independent of one another. Okay. And so we, to be a Calvary Chapel, you, you operate under a certain um, set of what they refer to as distinctives. Uh, certain things that are, that are just they're just common with Calvary Chapel. Uh, you know, teaching through the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, is one of those, probably the big distinctive of them. Um, but we're not mandated to do anything specifically. 
Um, and there, and so you'll find many churches, uh, and, and again, it really comes down to the pastor, how, what his heart is for that. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the reasons why we do this, the way we do it, is because Randy. Randy has a heart for prophecy. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I love prophecy. Like I said, if I come to it in the Bible, I'm going to teach it. Mm -hmm. But he is drawn to it. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it's one of those things that God has, has put on him. And so, if, you know, if a Calvary Chapel pastor either has a heart for it has somebody like a randy in their life mm -hmm. then they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna be more inclined to it most calvary chapels will address it mm -hmm. um and you'll find that one of the favorite books in most calvary chapels is revelation and we just it just seems to show up pretty regularly mm -hmm. because we believe revelation tells us how the story ends and we believe we're getting to the end of the story, so we ought to tell people about the end of the story. And and so and so you'll see Calvary chapels regularly teaching through the Book of Revelation and other books of prophecy. But yeah. Revelation tends to get a lot of a lot of traction because of that. But yeah, so so yeah, I would I would say I wouldn't say all, all of them, but you know they tend to lean in that direction. Generally speaking, if you go to a Calvary chapel, for the most part, you're going to get similar sorts of things yeah. again just depends on the size of the church and and you know lots of different factors that go into it mm -hmm. um, like I said if, if it weren't for Randy we wouldn't do as much prophecy as we do mm -hmm. um, and because he's just more inclined to it but you know I've taught Revelation four times now I think so. and I'm going to yeah. teach it again in March and, and I'm going to teach it I'm going to teach the whole book of Revelation in a week in Indonesia, mm -hmm. in Indonesia. Wow. So uh, I'm going to do, I think I've got 15 sessions. <laughs> and what's important about that, uh, you know, um, our church supports uh, Shine the Light Ministries STL. Mm -hmm. And um, in 2003, when um, the three of us, Deb, myself, and Pastor Brandon, who who's, we've ordained, um, is over in Indonesia and stays there all the time, um, we knew of no church throughout Indonesia that taught verse by verse. None. They primarily were, would get up and um, read one verse and go for two hours without, you know, taking a breath in particular. Now we know of about four churches that are teaching verse by verse. One that we planted, you know, mm -hmm. it's called Shine Fellowship. But uh, Pastor Gabriel, and I will ask you to pray for Pastor Gabriel. He's um, a pastor in uh, Bali, Indonesia, that is now moving to Jakarta. Uh, to pastor a church he caught the vision in 2003 to teach verse by verse and his church teaches verse by verse and it's really touched their church but for, as a general rule that whole country muslim largest muslim country in the world but there are a bunch of churches there they now have churches that are teaching verse by verse uh, w what we see is um, that's one of the reasons why we do even, you know, some of this is mm -hmm. to get that information out into places that, you know. Now, people can watch in, in our, um, uh, we'll call them staff, um, over in Indonesia. They'll sit and watch this, you know, um, because they want to hear and want mm -hmm. to learn. So it's thank a neat you. extension. Mm -hmm. It is. Thank you. That was a little bit more than a quick answer yeah. <laughs> other questions we've got, we got, we've got an hour I have a couple of footnotes I think <laughs> the things that comments that you made the store without cashiers that, that exists it's Amazon's getting into the food business in Seattle mm -hmm. I think so that exists already in an experimental way mm -hmm. and the cashless society I mean up until recently you know, Bitcoin was kind of a black dark web novelty but now there's cryptocurrencies getting mainstream trading and there's the big holdback has always been the security mm -hmm. there's a new technology called uh, blockchain you might have come across it in your study blockchain technology that is revolutionizing um, how the security um, uh, of those transactions happen and they anticipate everything from buying a soda from a machine to getting your mortgage on your house is going to be done you know, basically, it, and cryptocurrency has no, it's not a gold standard. There's no, no, there's nothing backing it at all. Um, and that and most of the technology people think that this blockchain is going to, what's, it's going to, that's the, the, the leap, the technological leap that's going to allow cryptocurrency to become mainstream. Mm. Um, 
and then just being a Navy guy, you'll appreciate this because you flew by sonar. Um, there, a college student has figured out how every house, every building pretty much has Wi-Fi in it. He can, he's figured out how you can detect the movement of people through Wi-Fi waves in a house. Wow. Yeah. I was, you, when, you, when you think about that concept, um, you know, and you, you talk about these flies that Pastor Rick was talking about. The flies are obviously able to transmit, but ultimately they're going to be able to carry a payload. So think about them sending a fly drone into um, a house and kill people because they're going to be able to do that. Or they're able to do it now. Um, so everything that you're saying, you know, that technology. Sweet dreams. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they're not going to come after Thanks, you, man. Ken. They're not going to come you. You're such a nice guy. They're going to leave you alone. Yeah. So. Nothing to do with me. Yeah. <laughs> what's Look a, up. What's a payload? Um, bombs, stuff oh. like that. Well, they can carry, they can carry right. stuff. Yeah. You know, the, you know, there's already there's already a movement to uh, to develop drones for companies like Amazon, so yeah. that you know, so yeah. that instead of having a truck deliver your package, a drone <coughs> just brings it and drops it off at your house. And so AI is going to enable all that stuff because you know, you know, it used to be that you know a single person would have to operate a drone. Now you know, with with artificial intelligence and and, the, and the, the connectedness of the world, they can launch a drone as far as they want to and have it bring a package to your house and you know, give it to you, get it to you, you know, not, not two days, but same day. You know, we're gonna see, again, you're gonna see all this technology is gonna continue to grow and to advance. And again, I think some of the things that, that are gonna happen are gonna be cool. And they're gonna be they're gonna be beneficial and useful and good for us. And we're talking about some of the, you know, the darker stuff. But I think you know artificial intelligence is going to make great advances in medicine, you know, as as they're able to start pro because the processing speed is going so far, they're going to be able to run certain kinds of tests that normally take you know very long time to process. They're going to start being able to do it faster and faster. Some of the aspects of you know uh, DNA testing and different things like that, you know, these these supercomputers are going to be able to start processing some of that stuff quickly. As a quick aside. Um, I ran across one of these little little you know factoids that I think was fascinating. I mentioned there's 295 exabytes of data storage in uh, in the world. Um, they estimate that that represents about one percent, one percent of the amount of information that's stored in your DNA. One percent. That's that is remarkable to me. What that says. Is that God is amazing? Amen. He has stored a hundred times the world's capacity to store information yeah. inside of your DNA. Yeah. Isn't that remarkable? Yes, it is. And, and, and you know, if you think about just yeah. piggybacking on that and going back to the Tower of Babel, when the the minutia or the minute information or knowledge that they had then compared to now. God was able to disperse them. God can do the same thing today. Yeah. So AI doesn't even come close to knowing what God knows yeah. and what he's going to do through us Amen. because he empowers us. And that is why, again, we study this is so that we're empowered because we have answers for people. We have the light of the world in our life. One of the things I think is cool for you know that that the, the technology is enabling us to do there's a, they're they're developing software that allows um, you know, in the Tower of Babel the confusing of languages that unconfuses languages yeah. literally yeah. that if you both have these devices that you can just speak naturally you you hear in your ear you know what they're saying in your own language it yeah. it literally translates almost instantly. So that then you can then respond back to them. It then communicates to them in their language, and so you have this this fluid conversation as opposed to what we typically have. When I go to Indonesia, what's going to happen is I'm going to have this little tiny guy. He stands about this tall. You know, Benny, if you're watching, love you, dude. He's, he's like he's like short. When I stand next to him, I am like Goliath. He is like David. 
But he, you know, I, I speak and then he translates. And then if they're talking to me, then, you know, he then here listens and he translates back for me. And this, you know, this, this connection goes on. There may be a time where I, I don't need a guy like Benny. I'm just literally going to be able to speak. You know, I can speak into a microphone and it will, it will actually broadcast in, in, the, in the language mm -hmm. that, you know, in Bahasa, in, in the case of Bahasa, Indonesian, um, which who knows what, you know, those kinds of things are going to do. So there's, there's great positive things and we don't, we don't want to get too caught up in all the negative things. Um, you got to be aware of them and that's the main thing. Just be aware that, don't be surprised when, you know, when things start getting weird around us because of all the technology. And you know we may get to a point where we're actually even called upon to voice an opinion on these things. And you know, as you know, in this country today, you know, as it exists right this now, we have a right to vote, and we ought to be exercising that vote when we have that opportunity. And when we see these things that are concerning to us, we ought to be doing what is, you know, what we have the freedom in this country to do, and that is to exercise that right to express our opinions and, if if possible, to vote on those things. Yes, ma'am. Just say the Antichrist is AI. How do you think after three and a half years he'll be assassinated? And how do you think he'll rise again? Yeah, I, I don't think he'll be AI. I think the Antichrist is a real man. Uh -huh. um, the image of him could be uh, uh -huh. that there's going to be an image created and set up inside the temple, mm -hmm. and that could be a, a robot. I, I'm still not convinced of that. I. I you know, you know, I tend to, you know, I, I tend to take the Bible literally wherever possible, um, and the way that it's described there is that this image is created, and then the the and then the um, the false prophet is given the ability to empower it. In the sense is, it's not it's not natural; it's supernatural, which suggests that it is a, a demonic kind of a of a of a of a thing going on there, but could it be a demonically, mo you know, um, driven AI? Of course, that that now is that now is much more possible. But the Antichrist himself is a real person, and he will he will receive what at least from the outside appears to be a mortal wound. Um, though most prophecy people don't don't believe that he'll actually die, but he'll give the appearance of death. And then the appearance of a resurrection. All of it's false because <laughs> Satan is always, he's a deceiver and a liar. And mm -hmm. all he can do is mimic the things that God does. He can't actually do them himself. Though he does have great power and do some things, there are some things he can't do. <coughs> and one of those, I believe, I don't believe he can raise the dead. <laughs> like a ruse? Like a what? Like a ruse. Like a ruse, sure. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Again, I know nothing about all of this, but a hologram, is that AI I mean, or what is that? Well, it's technology that would be um, a part of that. And, I, and I'll be honest with you, I, I used to think that, okay, that's one potential possibility, a hologram, you know, because now they're becoming unbelievable in what they're <laughs> able to do. But I think as Rick is talking, you know, Scripture doesn't tell us. Um, we know that it's something constructed yeah. you know not necessarily building wise but but developed and um, will it have AI well it's going to have some tenets of it because yeah. it's going to have the ability to learn and to speak and to you know do things um, how's that going to be you know what I really don't care because I'm not going to be here <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's pretty sad but you know, that's true but it's, uh, it's going to have the power to compel people yeah to worship yeah and mm -hmm. so, you know, the, that suggests its worldwide connection, you know, this connection through possibly through a network of AI yeah. um, computers. So, again, yeah, we're, we're just, right at this point, you know, we have no idea, you know, what that's going to look like yeah. because, and just so many things, and so many things are going to happen in the first three and a half years leading up to that. This world is going to look nothing like it does today. Nothing. Mm -hmm. The things that we take for granted today, They'll be they'll be totally different during that period period of time. Um, the the Antichrist is gonna is gonna is gonna cause things to happen in this world that this world has never experienced before. We've never seen it before, and the things that we take for granted today are gonna be many of them will be gone, and they'll be replaced by completely different things. So 
Yeah, we we got to be careful because we're going to take we take today's reality and try to project it forward into that period, and we just may not be able to do that because it may be something totally different. Yeah. And and the technology is advancing so fast. There's no way for us to predict what ten years is going to look like in this world. Should and he tarry? Should he tarry that long? That's right. Which he may not. But if you think about the Apostle Paul trying to describe describe the end times, you know, the, the tribulation. How do you um, describe events where two billion people are going to die? You know, because yeah. that's going to happen. That kind of thing. Um, could that be some of these robots that you know do? Absolutely, it could. But yeah. because we don't know, um, it, it's we, we can only you know surmise that. That's a possibility. So. Yeah, there's in the uh, I remember where it's at Revelation where the locusts come out of the pit. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always you know, and, and their the description of them is they are these demonically looking creatures. But now with these little robots that fly around, I'm wondering <laughs> could they actually be you know little robots that are created and they you know they still come out of the pit. But again, we don't know. And, and let's say we yeah, you know, whenever you start talking about things like that, we got to be careful. You know, because again, we're trying to project, you know, like like you know, you know, you know, John trying to describe things, you know, that he's seeing using first century eyes, you know, twenty possibly twenty first century realities. We can't predict what ten years looks like. You know, the things that are that are going to be here in ten years, we can't even in many cases even imagine that. I think every time we go onto the news and see what they're doing, we're like, wow. I didn't know they could do that. Yeah, imagine what they could do after they continue, you know, to, you know, they go from, you know, 300, 295 exabytes to 100 times that, which is not hard to imagine that, you know, that, that all the different, you know, the, the, the capacity. Computers get faster and yeah. smaller. Uh, you know, I've got in my cell phone, I've got 128 gigabytes. No. Yes, gigs. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. 128 in my cell phone. They didn't have that much. They had less computing power in the Apollo mission that landed on the moon <laughs> than I have in my cell phone. Wow. You know that, that. You know. Imagine what another 10, 20 years, if the Lord tarries, it could be. Oh, we're like out of time. Any last questions before we shut it down? What are you talking on next month? I remember you said it last month. We haven't decided that one just yet. Yeah, we toyed around with the idea of talking about the rapture again, but coming yeah, back to it. Yeah, coming back and doing something specific because like last time I talked about the, the different viewpoints of the rapture, and maybe coming back the next time and talking about the viewpoint that we that we you know subscribe to in the church, and really kind of drilling down and talking about that. But we are open to suggestions. If you've got a particular yeah. topic that you'd like to hear about, just let me know uh, because we're here. We're here to serve. You know, we're here to talk about those things that are important to you guys. Uh, because if it's important to you, then it's probably important to others as well. That that goes for you if you're watching online. If you got some thoughts on on what you'd like to see us talk about, just send us a comment on the on the YouTube video. Which, by the way, if you ever want to go back and watch it. You're, you can do that. It's on our. It'll be on our channel as, as soon as we're done here. So, but let us know. I'd love to. I'd love to get your input. Otherwise, we're gonna get together and you know Come do what we want to do. Right. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, but we'd love to. We'd love to also just do what you guys are interested in. Okay. Any last questions? All right, Randy, would you close us in prayer, please? Let's do that. Father, as we just uh, bow before you, we acknowledge the fact that you are God. You are creator God, Father. You know the beginning from the end. And you, Father, are, are our rock. And so, Lord, I pray that as we talk about these things that uh, um, are prophetic and that are coming, help us, Father, uh, not to grow weary of doing good, but to go forth from this place and, Father, to... Um, seek you even deeper, and to share you even bolder. And so, Lord, bless this time that it might um, ultimately, Father, challenge people to come into an eternal knowledge of Jesus Christ. 
And so, Lord, we just pray that you would anoint this time, anoint each person that has come uh, as they drive home, give them traveling mercies. And Lord, help us just give you the praise and the glory for you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, God bless you guys, and we'll see you next month.